Disney. Creativity, wonder, imagination, decimation, corporatization, domination. A long time ago, a man with the middle name Elias drew a cute little rabbit named Oswald. But rabbits like carrots and sarcasm, and mice like cheese and money spreads. So the mouse grabbed a hammer, smashed the rabbit into a bunch of bits, and began to cut down all the trees while banishing Danny DeVito to the unknown. Then after Mickey the Mouse and Walter Elias Disney ran the world. And to celebrate their victory, I'm gonna crack open a cold one in my lonesome. No friends, no job, no nothing. But it's okay, because I could watch Peter Pan with no distractions. <laughs> It's been 70 years since I've been in the ice. What's a Marvel? What's a Star Wars? What's League of Legends and why do degenerate losers with nothing going on in their lives love it? Why are there strikes? Where is Walter Elias Disney? Why is he replaced by a man named Bob Iger? What do you mean JFK got no scoped? What? And when did America get a black president? You black son of a bitch! Alright, let's do this one last time. Let me be clear. Hi, I'm Dr. Skiffer. I make videos on the internet. I complained about Pixar, movie theaters. Some of you subscribe, some of you are not. Shut you should up. probably do that. Shut up! And Disney has been in a tad bit of trouble recently. On the internet, you're always gonna find people annoyed by something for either minuscule reasons, valid reasons, and sometimes strange reasons. Looking is now the day. Kiss my ass! But first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, it was, it was just kind of cool. Okay. Hey, have you heard of Raid Shadow Legends? Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play mobile game that has an expansive world full of content, with amazing graphics and amazing looking champions, all from their own unique factions. There's over 700 unique champions for you to collect with each of them having their own unique skills and abilities, each coming from 15 awesome factions out of a bunch of wacky and fun creatures like lizard men, orcs, elves, if you could think of it, it's probably here for you. In the battlefield, you could take on 12 dungeons, with each having scary spooky boss fights. And I know most of you will probably PvP fiends like me, so you'll obviously give a crack at the PvP arena battles. The game is always fresh and new due to regular content updates. You always have new raids to play, bosses to slay, and champions to... Obtained? Okay, I was trying to rhyme. You could play Raid Shadow Legends anytime, anywhere. From your mobile device to your computer, and when you get bored of your computer, you could take the game to your mobile device. Since there's cross progression, you guys will have a blast with it. There's over 400 million players in over 190 countries playing this game with millions of different ways to play. From customization or tweaking your champion's builds to be just the way you want. And for new players, you could get your hands on the Stag Knight, one of the best epic champions around. As well as the skin for the Stag Knight, designed by JonTron. Just use promo code JT skin before October 7th to get it. And don't sweat it if you're not a new player. You can still get the Stag Knight and skin through an in-game event. Also, do you want a free legendary champion? Don't answer that, because of course you do. Check out Sun Wukong, a cool monkey king coming as a free legendary champion. All you've got to do is log in a raid on seven different days between August 22nd and October 23rd to get your hands on this champion. With all this exciting, fun, and more stuff coming to raid, if you haven't started playing yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description and scan my QR code to get insane bonuses. We're talking an epic champion, Talia, from the Sacred Order faction, and other useful things like energy refills, skill tomes, XP boosters. Once you're in, you could find me under the name Dr. Skipper. And if you're fast enough, you could join my clan. So hit my link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. Disney has lost $900 million in the last eight studio releases, and they're on track to lose up to two billion. Elon, Zuckerberg, Kanye, I know you sons of bitches watch these videos, so you're excluded. But to all the other little worker ants in the Dr. Skipper, empire. Two billion dollars? With two billion dollars we never got a clock into work, go to school, we could all just order pizza and play Xbox all day with two billion goddamn dollars. But we don't have two billion dollars. Shut the fuck up! And neither will Disney soon. So instead of playing MW2 on the Xbox 360, all the worker ants are now making picket lines. <laughs> Because for the last three years, they've all been getting paid in Monopoly money while Bobby Boy has been making 45 million a year hitting money spreads and all the poor and damned. And I could lie to you and get some brownie points to say that the main reason I want the Strikers to win is so that all the entertainers get a fair pay. But the actual reason is that I need Adam Ruins Everything to shut the hell up and go back to stuffing his face with pizza rolls and donuts and whatever he eats in his dark little shack in the middle of nowhere. So let's take this back to the beginning. Since Disney is the big dog of the world, they got blank checks, which gives them the ability to buy out anything they want, and when it doesn't go right, they could wipe it off the face of the earth as a tax write-off. In the prime days of Disney, they're in the back shredding documents. Anyone who sued them would blow up in an all-paid expenses vacation. The Pinkertons were killing all the Rotten Tomato critics. And secret agents were smashing the graves of any dead child who wanted the web-slinger to join them in the Coco world.
Me even making this video puts me and all my guys in danger. They're coming for us, Mingus! Barricade the door! But now here today, the critics are speaking their minds and the money loss is being made public. What happened to operating in the shadows, Disney? You gonna let Angry Joe give the Little Mermaid a four and have him wake up in the morning? What the hell? And we got a Mr. Beast burger. <laughs> But how did we get here? What went wrong? Let's reverse the thingamajigger and go back some bits. Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney film and animation are some of the main players for the dough in the bank. And for them to join the Disney army required some cheddar cheese. Disney bought Pixar for 7.4 billion. They bought Marvel for 4 billion and Star Wars for 4 billion. But why did Disney buy these guys for billions anyway? It's because Woody and Buzz are the shit. Anakin Skywalker was him. And Iron Man killed a bunch of terrorists for America. All these guys had potential and Disney was taking big gambles. And they would rather die before they let the house win. So they got to work. Steamboat Willie, Snow White, another princess, princess, lying piece of shit, child lover. Animation is what really put Disney on the map. It's why Walter was able to pay the mortgage and cook up his little Disneyland idea, where the wait time to get on Indiana Jones is 130 minutes in the 100 degree, 37 Celsius, California sun. Is it a deliberate hit job to kill me and my boys? I can't say. But as Disney became more powerful, they wanted to branch out and be the umbrella for the new and fresh. All these studios made a name for themselves before they got snatched up. George Lucas made six Star Wars movies, some good, some bad, but the good were really good. Like, they changed the whole world of cinema and sci-fi genre levels of good. And the bad had Jar Jar Binks, but it's okay because because they also had Watto, so was it really that bad? Hey, no, yeah. go f Yeah, go fuck you, go. idiot. Disney went to a feature film agreement with Pixar in 1991. After making cute little shorts with Turned On Snowmen, where they kept the same sentiment years later with attempted murder to a large and in charge bird with some strong opinions. But when Toy Story was a grand slam, Disney continued the relationship until Cars in 2006. Where instead of being partners, Disney just said, hey, why not be a part of the bigger picture? So they ate Pixar and became Disney Pixar in the same year of 2006. And then they made Ratatouille, so it was off to the races. In 2008, John Favreau makes Iron Man 1 to kick off the MCU. Before this, Marvel had no money and were selling off all their children to avoid getting whacked by the mob. So when superheroes started to pop up, it wasn't Doctor Doom or the Silver Surfer playing the bad guy to keep these heroes divided, but rather a group of people more sinister and soulless. It was the blood-sucking lawyers. Because all the heroes were owned by different companies. Sony had Spider-Man, Fox had X-Men, Fantastic Four, Wolverine, and Universal had the Hulk. Other than these guys, nobody but the four-eyed comic book freaks gave a shit about any other Marvel people. That was until the man in the can got a movie that was actually pretty cool. Since Iron Man was a nobody that got flipped into a somebody, Disney had a light bulb moment. Instead of ever trying to get a sticky dork or a dork on trend, why not just get all the other toys that nobody cares for for cheap and make those things just as cool as the cocksuckers owned by everybody else. Iron Man's end credit wasn't Nick Fury talking to Iron Man about his place in the world. It was Disney talking to Robert Downey Jr. himself. Get the Avengers and start making a world of superheroes that were interconnected to reach a massive boiling point. Make these nobodies into anything. And then make the nobodies start crossing over into their nobody stuff, which then makes them become something. And eventually you'll make so much goddamn money that you could just buy the competition that you were beefing with in the first place. Lucasfilm is a different animal from the rest because Lucasfilm was full of cobwebs when Disney wanted it. George was done. He hung it up. He loved his six movies and had a thought about continuing, but nah, he didn't want to. Even with its controversial prequel era, Star Wars was so adored and full of imagination and imagery, crafted with wonder and passion, and it was over. It was done. It made its money, but George was not. Revenge of the Sith concluded in 2005, and when he wasn't piloting planes into the ground, Harrison Ford would sit in his bedroom all alone, getting nostalgic with the glory days of punching Nazis while reminding everyone that everything belongs in a museum. Not able to let the grand old archaeologist go, he and George had a talk over a beautiful, scrumptious breakfast. Both were down to get Indy on the big screen again, so they talked to skeptical Steven Spielberg, who was in the same boat as George with Star Wars, who was satisfied with something he loved coming to an end. But who could resist that beautiful Nazi punching face. Eventually, Steven gave in and slapped on his director's cap, which led to the creation of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which at the time seemed like the final end of Indiana Jones. So we thought. George Lucas, now closing the book, wanted to venture out and make films that would push the limits and make no money. And they wouldn't make money because they would never be seen. He was making films not to be seen that were losing money. 
I mean, look at the dude. We, we don't know what he's cooking, but it was probably some weird kink shit, let's be honest. George weighed the options. He wanted Star Wars to continue out of his hands, but he also didn't. And he wanted to make his own personal movies, but doing so would put like 2,000 people out of work. And Disney was willing to pay. The mouse viewed the Star Wars property as evergreen. They wanted to bring back Star Wars and hype up the next generation of heroes, playing on nostalgia of old Star Wars fans itching for that original charm. The prequel hate bandwagon was still strong. So having an episode seven looked like an episode four, but with wacky new mysterious stuff was gonna make a lot of money. So George put up Lucasfilm for sale and Disney bought it in 2012 for $4 billion and immediately hauled ass for a film in 2015 under the recent sci-fi bad boy J.J. Abrams. Disney animation was innovative and beautiful, raising a whole generation of children and adults alike off of passion and actual blood, sweat, and tears, animating song after song and dance after dance. We were all shaking our ass to the Jamaican crab and hillbilly firefly They got snuffed the fuck out, but... What if you could tell these imaginated adventures again and charge people to see it? Live action remakes have been happening since the 90s, but they've had the most success in the last 10 years, so they keep getting spammed out. And the reason they keep getting spammed out is because some of these are box office juggernauts making a lot of money. So why the hell would you stop the gravy train? Okay, you got the TED Talk news lesson on how all these giants got to be giants, but let's cut the bullshit and get back into the meat of why you're all here. Disney has bought out shit at a point of greatness or shaped the thing that they did buy out into a point of greatness, and once the legwork was done, they clocked the fuck out and stopped giving a shit. Live action, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, all in a downward spiral. You had the game unlocked and you crashed into the ground, Bob. You're just like the Phoenix Suns. And now you want to sit there on a golf trip with a smug ass attitude, you cocksucking motherfucker. On new issue day, you wasted 300 million dollars on a fucking Star Wars cruise that you can't afford on new issue day. The massive money loss of Disney shows how pitiful Disney's been lately with all the buyouts. The only way to make consistent money in any form of entertainment is by having the trust and reputation in said markets. Look at the gaming world for example. CD Projekt Red made good games, and then they promised the world. And because they didn't do anything bad before, everyone trusted them, so they bought the new thing. And when it didn't actually cure cancer, they got mad and now they gotta think twice next time. From Software did the same thing, but they actually gave the world so they will continue to make money on future things. Look, I know I just went on a small gaming tangent. To the non-gamers, I still think you get the point. People like the shit they like, and if you make a bunch of promises that make people sad, they ain't gonna trust the bullshit you spew next time. But hey, at least you got a bag. The Force Awakens broke records, becoming the largest domestic movie of all time because, well, Star Wars is back. And I get to be Boba Fett in the game right next to it, so Star Wars is back. They played it so incredibly safe to debut, and once it worked, they chose to play hot potato with the directors. There's never a structure or direction. A franchise worth billions of fucking dollars was done on a whim that had two directors playing tug of war with mediocre bullshit. I made a cool mask. Fuck your mask. Hey, dickhead, the mask is back. Look, it's Luke Saber. Fuck your Saber. Hey, asshole, the Saber is back. Look, new villain. Fuck your villain. Well, I have no new villain since you killed him, asshole, so Palpatine is back. And while this child's play is going on, someone in the back is making a roadmap for a new Star Wars film every year. The first spinoff was Rogue One, which did well because it was the first modern Hollywood project going back to the original trilogy, and it was advertised as a war film. And hey look, it made a lot of money. So what do they do to follow up Rogue One? They don't make an Obi-Wan movie that they have planned. They don't make a Boba Fett movie that they have planned. They make a Han Solo movie that Harrison Ford didn't give a single damn about. And while they were comfortable with a bunch of dumb fuck idiots fighting over who gets to be player one, they got Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who are known for making things like the Lego movie, the Jump Street movies, and the Spider-Verse movies, and put them on a leash and got mad when they wanted to make a good film. So they fired them, kind of restarted, ran up the budget, and released it the same year as another Star Wars project. And uh-oh, it bombed hard. And of course, Disney thinking like they do go, oh no, a movie did bad? Now they're all gonna do bad. So they pulled the damn plug and never made a sequel to Solo. Then in 2019, John Favreau had a fun idea for their new streaming service. And when Disney saw that The Mandalorian did good on TV, being its own thing without so much scale, what did they do? They got their dirty hands all over it, put a bunch of money makers, gave those asshole shows, and now they're all flopping so Disney's coming close to pulling the plug again. They see something do well, and then they copy and paste with no soul, and get surprised and blame the system when things don't go their way. Then they see something do good again, and the cycle repeats. Mando season one works because it's the box of toys you don't care about. Why the fuck is Lizzo and Jack Black in season three? I've already made a video on this, but you have the most easy, nostalgia money maker being the prequel fandom with Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader, and you fuck it up by going half ass, which hurts the Star Wars brand, which ends up hurting Andor, which has been one of the best things to come out of Star Wars, but nobody saw it because nobody gives a shit anymore, which is the problem with Star Wars. There's too much, and that oversaturation 
animation also doesn't have quality control. The Force Awakens was a big hit because Star Wars was special. The sound of the lightsaber, the X-Wing, the theme song, now it's boring and overdone and the magic is becoming stale. Boba Fett is slowly losing his cool silhouette, Luke Skywalker keeps coming back with CGI, you made Obi-Wan and Anakin lame, you took away Baby Yoda since he served his purpose, then you brought him back to sell more fucking toys, when at some point we were all waiting every week to learn even the tiniest thing about him. And guess what, it's not just Star Wars, Indiana Jones is back, but without George and Steven, and you play it safe and boring while overcomplicating it too much with new shit in this so-called finale, and now it's a massive flop. Lucasfilm, can you do anything right? We don't even need to talk about Willow because it was so bad that it's getting wiped from history as a tax write-off. All right, my biggest video on this channel is about why Pixar isn't doing hot, so let's keep this short and brief. And if you really want specifics, you could watch it after. I said after. You don't get to leave. If you deliberately fuck up my watch time, I'll fuck you, you like, like a pig. pig, as I was saying. Pixar was really cool and made really cool stuff. Then they saw a lot of money in the water, so they pumped out sequels that were not as good and made people lose trust, but still made money. And by making money, they thought everything was always gonna be sunshine and rainbows, so they stockpiled a bunch of boring projects that cost a lot of money to make, and then the competition started to make cooler stuff like Spider-Man, Puss in Boots, and Ninja Turtles, and Disney did not make cool stuff, but instead put a bunch of money on not cool stuff and lost a bunch of money. Now. Let's talk about the biggest money maker. Marvel picked up pace after the Avengers, and when you do anything in mass, you're gonna have some misses. But one of those misses led to the creation of Chef, so was it really a miss at the end of the day? You know how hard I work for this shit? Oh. Do you know how my whole staff works? What sacrifices make to make you happy, and then you just smugly just fucking shit on my shit? But the hits, uh... They hit big, like Chris Pratt single-handedly got a career from Guardians of the Galaxy, if we're not counting Andy Dwyer, aka Johnny Karate. What does this do? Captain America got two great sequels, Thor had two boring movies, then got a new breath of fresh air. Black Panther was adored by a lot of people, Doctor Strange was interesting, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was fantastic, better than the first one objectively, suck my balls. And then in the third Captain America, Spider-Man appeared because Disney and Sony struck a deal and they got Spider-Man his own movie in the MCU and oh, and you know that purple guy that's been getting hyped up since the first Avengers film? He's now the main villain of your next Avengers film that has everybody. And then he wins in the end and your conclusion to that story is next year. And while the film next year is not as good, the hype around it made it the biggest movie of all time until the blue bastards got it back. This was in 2019 by the way. In 2020 you got no Marvel movies or shows, and then in 2021 and 2022 you got everything. You got a large dump of poor Marvel stuff. And like Star Wars, the same problems are present. The Marvel movies are pointless, confusing, and inconsistent. Quality control has gone out the window while nothing remains to be experimental, except the movies that have nothing to lose. Spider-Man does not need Disney, and Spider-Man does not need the MCU. Spider Spider-Man is in his own little realm, minding his own little business and his own little world. And with James Gunn, Disney did an uh-oh and banished their best director to the Shadow Realm, and the competition bought him. Then they realized what they did was stupid and took him back, but it was too late. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is in its own little world doing its own little thing. Both movies are closures to trilogies that focus on being movies, rather than being pointless setup movies with no subtle and proper world building or character building. Black Widow sucked, Shang-Chi was generic and safe, Eternals was... It was Eternals. Then alongside three movies in one year, you have five mini-movies disguised as shows because they are not shows. The episodes are short and they're usually six or eight of them clocking into the same amount of time as a Marvel movie. That all follow a similar format of starting off kinda interesting, to then get boring, to then throw out the gimmick to become a Marvel action fight. And this even carried to future shows. And right now we are at the worst point. Marvel's recent movies suck. They made backwards progression. Doctor Strange was shit. Wakanda Forever was a panic project that wasn't as good as the first. And Ant-Man Quantum Mania joined the club of closing trilogies. But it's now the worst Marvel trilogy because the last two films suck complete ass, including Quantumania. Maybe if Disney wasn't spineless and had Edgar Wright make the movies, it might have joined the club. And with the TV shows, you have She-Hulk, which is a obnoxious, hypocritical waste of time. Miss Marvel, that should have been on Disney XD. Moon Knight, which marketed itself to look like a grounded, gritty telling of D.I.D. to then have a fucking kaiju fight. And Secret Invasion, that cost $200 million for six episodes and was supposed to be Marvel's Andor, is now the worst rated Marvel project of all time with a horrible horrible finale and then you have disney live action lion king was lame as hell and got a billy because people like the one with actual imagination same applies to beauty and the beast and aladdin with will smith and the recent little mermaid and it's going to be happening with snow white these are all easy to make because all you have to do is copy the previous homework and they couldn't even do that right mulan was a disgrace for no reason aladdin added stupid shit for no reason beauty and the beast the new snow white looks fucking dog shit they're all bad compared to their cartoon counterparts and where disney wants had the audience in a trance jiggling car keys, people are now sick of it. You can see through the pandering bullshit and the box office 
is starting to show that fatigue. The most disappointing thing about all of this is that while we have all these great properties fall from grace one by one, Bob Iger is contemplating selling Disney to Apple because Disney has gone against everything it once stood for. A hundred years of wonder, my ass. Your captain is mocking the underpaid writers and actors that keep this flaming dumpster afloat, hoping to wait them out until their fucking you know rent that? is due while he golfs and drinks wine. Disney was once seen as a company of imagination, but now they are constantly being outclassed by competition as they keep trying to throw money at the problem of their crumbling monopoly. And as they keep pumping out slop and making hotels that no one could afford while raising ticket prices to their theme parks that eliminate the working class, they're gonna keep seeing people get more fed up and pissed off. Because Disney is only where it's at because of the original groundworks that made it what it is. People love Disney, but Disney does not love you. I'm Dr. Skipper. Subscribe for Rocket's sake. Rocket's on Shrek, Rocket's on deck. Let's get the hell out of here, Lightning McQueen. Boys, boy, been turning into psycho.